All right, get to full screen. Make sure this is coming through okay. Yes, we see it fine. Very good, thank you. Again, uh, my name is Brad Niles, uh, CEO of a company called Arise Precision Medicine, and we are focusing on a family of histomethyltransferases, uh, known as the PRDMs, uh, that have been shown to be involved in a number of different cancer types uh, at the very early change in cancerization of the cell. So it's a very exciting area for us to work on uh, in this development of therapeutics. We're currently in the preclinical stage. For our story, uh, we work in the sRNA space. It's a very active area in the last few years, uh, post the first uh, FDA approval of an siRNA product by the company called Alnylam. Uh, there's since been four clinical and four preclinical deals in the space. Uh, we have much improved specificity and efficacy compared to um, uh, antibody drug conjugates, uh, which again have uh, kind of uh, have become a popular in the last couple of years. Um, our platform of sRNA conjugates has, um, in our experiments in, in pre uh, preclinical animal models, no observed toxicities. Uh, and in our non-small cell lung cancer model, we've been able to achieve more than 80% tumor growth inhibition, uh, which I'll show you uh, here shortly. Uh, we have uh, multiple uh, anti-cancer candidates uh, with potential for many different indications in the cancer space. The reason we're doing this uh, really centers on the patient experience. Um, we all know people uh, that have undergone chemotherapy and, and uh, have seen the harsh side effects that result from that type of treatment. And unfortunately, uh, one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed uh, with cancer in their lifetime. And so there is a real need for uh, new cancer therapeutics, particularly in the targeted variety, uh, to get away from these, uh, you know, really what's an ancient technology uh, in chemotherapy and, and avoid uh, these harsh patient side effects and allow you to get a, a curative cancer treatment uh, that kills cancer cells without affecting normal healthy cells. And so um, we believe that uh, targeted medicine is the way to go here. Uh, so uh, our approach on sRNAs uh, captures this opportunity because we can get to the root cause of the cancer. Uh, by doing so, uh, we can eliminate side effects because we're killing the cancer cells without killing the normal healthy cells. We've been uh, recognized by a number of different groups, uh, including being named uh, as the Stardom Stadium finalist this, this last year at the Bio International Conference. We've been awarded a golden ticket. We have a development partner in place to help us with our development. Uh, and we've raised about $3 million to date uh, with our seed round investor, Moneta Ventures. We've got a great team in place in order to carry out this work. Uh, myself, I've got about 20 years in the cancer uh, uh, research and, and therapeutics development space. Uh, Glenn Kazo was involved um, in a number of different companies in the drug development space, including some time with Alnylam. Uh, we've got expertise uh, across drug development as well as clinical and regulatory uh, through our team members and advisors. Our technology is really based uh, on this specific delivery of therapeutic payloads directly to the site of the cancer. Uh, and this um, cartoon demonstrates here what we're trying to achieve uh, with sRNAs protected on the inside of a nanoparticle del delivery system uh, that protects the sRNAs uh, from RNAs in the blood and allows for very specific delivery to the cancer cells. Uh, you'll notice here on the outside of the nanoparticle uh, represented with these squiggly lines is the uh, surface treatment of a targeted ligand. Uh, we utilize a DNA aptamer targeting ligand technology to achieve very specific delivery to the cancer cells. Uh, you can see this here in some data that was published a few years back uh, with this DNA aptamer that we're utilizing. Uh, it gets very specific delivery to tumors uh, and doesn't get caught up in a lot of the uh, other major organs, uh, which is a downside of a lot of uh, oligo-based therapies uh, in uh, traditionally lipid nanoparticle liposome type delivery systems that often get caught in the liver. Uh, this prevents sufficient concentration of sRNA at the site of the tumor, uh, which is what we can achieve uh, with this very directed delivery to the tumor. And shown to be recognized by a number of different cancer types based on expression of a receptor on these cancer cells. Uh, and so we can deliver to a number of different cancer types with specificity for cancer versus healthy. Uh, so how does this actually work out? Uh, so data sh here showing our mouse uh, in vivo xenograft study, uh, again, with a non-small cell lung cancer cell line uh, known as A549. Uh, what we did is we treated twice a week for four weeks. 
we compared this with um, standard of care chemotherapy carboplatin, uh, which you'll see here in blue. Uh, and uh, we were able to achieve uh, much higher uh, efficacy compared to uh, uh, carboplatin, about 24% better. Uh, overall, about an 80% reduction compared to the vehicle control. And importantly, we observe no toxicities uh, in, in uh, major, um, uh, major organs or, or weight of the animal. Uh, we were able to achieve this remarkable efficacy uh, due to very specific delivery uh, of the sRNA to the side of the tumor. You can see here this uh, data demonstrates the uh, additional efficacy that comes from adding the targeting ligand. Uh, so this is our ARISE-47 sRNA in an untargeted nanoparticle. Uh, this is the ARISE-47 in the targeted nan nanoparticle. So we're able to achieve uh, almost 90% knockdown uh, of the um, gene target directly in the side of the tumor through an admin, uh, IV administrated uh, therapeutic. Uh, we chose lung cancer as a space to go after because of uh, a couple of interesting data sets that have been published in the last couple of years. Uh, one demonstrates uh, in a, a rodent model uh, the connection between smoking and lung cancer uh, through methylation silencing of this gene of interest, uh, PRDM2. Uh, and so this uh, methylation continues throughout the cancerization process. And so you can see here uh, about a two-fold elevation in methylation uh, as a result of high levels of tobacco carcinogen. Uh, this data is supported by human data uh, shown here on the right, uh, in which um, in this study, they found about 70% of human lung cancer patient samples had an increase in methylation, uh, possibly due to uh, smoking, but also uh, other environmental toxins, age, uh, and viruses all lead to a methylation and silencing of this PRDM2 gene and its major isoform RIS1. Uh, so this gives us a really exciting opportunity to be able to target a very large number of patients uh, within the lung cancer uh, patient population. And as a result of that, there's a potential for very high revenue. Uh, with ARISE 47 here, uh, as I'm mentioning, about 70% of patients could be applicable to this type of drug. Uh, if you compare that with some of the existing drugs that are out in the market, uh, there's about there's more than $10 billion potential sales for a product like this um, moving forward in the 2 million new cases of lung cancer patients diagnosed every year. Uh, potential revenue and timelines. Our goal is to license off to a pharmaceutical partner. This comes with upfront fees uh, and continues with milestone fees as we move forward and gives us a real good opportunity for an exit uh, through an M&A or an IPO in, in the years to come. And I'll just finish up here. I know we're running short on time with our development timeline. Uh, we plan to get through a number of major milestones in the next two years, uh, including starting our uh, human phase one clinical trial uh, in 2026. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Roger. Okay, thank you.